Okay, so... Tyler Toffoli, eh? Can we get that out of the way before we start this entire video? This discussion about Montreal and Calgary? Tyler Toffoli has been so beloved everywhere he has gone, it kind of makes me jealous how one human being can be just this cool. Tyler Toffoli gets traded over to Vancouver in 20... 20, right? Yeah, it's 2020. And he is immediately beloved. He's a point per game. He only plays 10 regular season games because thank you, Shim Benning. But the fans in Rogers Arena, they love this guy. Tyler Toffoli is the hot new player in town, the hot new top six forward, the hot new scorer on the team. Eventually, he doesn't come back. He signs in Montreal, and Habs fans absolutely adore this guy too because he absolutely torches Vancouver in the North Division. It's really, really funny. Yeah, I, I know. It kind of gives me bad flashbacks as well. And then he gets traded over the Calgary. He scores a goal in his first game. He's got terrible form with his skating. Like, my goodness, what is he doing sticking his leg out as he drives to the net? But the crowd ends up chanting his name to Tyler Foley. Like, it's fantastic. Name me a hockey player who has been as beloved as Tyler Toffoli has been when he's gone out there playing for three teams in the span of like two years. It's wild, isn't it? But either way, when we talk about the Tyler Toffoli trade between the Montreal Canadiens and the Calgary Flames, there is another name that kind of was present in those discussions too. Let's make today's video about Ben Chirot and give ourselves an update about his entire trade situation because it also is somewhat significant. Now, our source here is the TSN Insider Trading video. It's, you know, as I said, a video, so it's not really a thing that we can screenshot. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and watch the video, but we're also going to be reading from this NHLTradeTalk.com article because what they did was they summarized the stuff that was highlighted in that video. It's easier this way because I can screenshot and put it on the screen and you can follow along. I'm not just going to be talking about something said in a video without having any reference in front of it. So, let's take a look at what they had to say on TSN about Ben Sherratt. He was actually almost part of the Tyler Toffoli trade, and now he could be moved in the next 7 to 10 days. As per the report on TSN Insider Trading, the Canadians almost dealt Ben Sherratt to the Flames as part of a bigger trade with Tyler Toffoli. According to Darren Dreger of TSN during Tuesday's Insider Trading segment, the NHL Insider noted that Ben Sherratt was discussed as part of the Toffoli trade, a piece of what would have been a much bigger deal than the trade that actually went down. He notes the Habs may not wait long to move Sherratt. Now, pause up just for a second right here, because the real Tyler Toffoli trade was Toffoli in exchange for a first, a con or I guess you could say a conditional first, right? Because... It is top 10 protected. It's going to be a first either way. So a first Emil Heineman and a fifth round pick. There's also going to be an extra fourth in there should the condition on the first round pick actually activate. And so this is a pretty big trade. And it's one that I think sets the market for a lot of the other top tier forwards in the NHL that are also going to be traded. And for Tyler Toffoli by himself to get this, it kind of makes me wonder, okay, if the trade was instead Toffoli and Sherratt, would we have instead be seeing two first-round picks? Because that's kind of the going rate that we have seen. Would it just have been an extra first-round pick, making it two? Would it have been an extra first and a third or a second? Or maybe you could have had an extra first-round pick and you could have upgraded that prospect from Emil Heineman to, I don't know, Coronado, Pelche, Zari. There are some pretty good names on the Calgary Flames in their prospect pool. And so now you think about Ben Sherratt and you say, okay... He wasn't traded. Now he'll be traded, let's say, within the next week and a bit. This is also what they talk about here on the TSN video. Saying the Flames were open to a bigger deal, the problem for Calgary was that the trade became too large to be realistic. Both the Foley and Sherrod are expected to fetch first-round picks, and if the Flames were to have landed both players, they would have had to give up significantly more than what they did send to Montreal for just a Foley, a deal that required Calgary to give up quite a bit. The Canadians wanted to ensure they got the best return for both players, and eventually Calgary bowed out. Dreger adds that Calgary likely isn't done adding players, and will try to add a depth defenseman and maybe even a depth forward, but will have to find what they need without giving up what it would cost to acquire Sherratt. 
Pierre Lebrun suggests the Flames could circle back on Chirot if another team doesn't give Montreal what they want, and the Habs are not expected to wait long to move the defenseman, having called a number of playoff contenders to see if there is interest. Lebrun suggests that with the slight injury scare that occurred this week, Montreal will try to deal him in the next 7-10 to 10 days and take the first offer that includes a first pick and an asset. So... Ben Sherratt, the entire injury scare seems to have been somewhat of a catalyst that kind of forces this to be done sooner rather than later, and I guess that makes sense, you know? Once he was taken out of the lineup a few days ago, a lot of people were freaking out, okay, what the heck is happening? Our first-round caliber trade asset is all of a sudden going to be put on the IR, and... Thankfully, it's just the regular IR, not the LTIR, so he's going to be sticking around here in the regular season for a while, but there is indeed a little bit more of an urgency, I would think, for the Canadians to go out there and trade this player. I forgot where the list was, but somebody actually went out there onto, I think it was Daily Faceoff, or it might have been a TSN insider trading bit. I forgot, but there were a lot of NHL insiders highlighting all the teams that are interested in Ben Sherratt, and the list is pretty gosh darn long. Like, the Canadians trying to go out there and get the best return for this guy, it's absolutely possible with the amount of teams that want this player. Like, you have yourself such a bidding war, or the potential for such a big bidding war, to go on for this guy right here that it would be impossible for the Canadians to not get what they want, right? Because teams are just going to be one-upping each other. Okay, screw it, that team's giving you a first-rounder for Sherrod, how about we give you a first-rounder and this prospect right here? And then another team is like, okay, they're giving you a first-round pick and a prospect, how about we one-up that? A first-round pick and this better prospect over here. And you can see how the bidding war can go and extend beyond what the Montreal Canadiens are initially starting out with, and so it's just a matter of time, is it not? Playoff teams are going to be going out there trying to get themselves players. It just appears that Calgary might not want to give up the price for a Ben Chirot considering they already gave up a pretty good amount of assets for Tyler Toffoli. I think that's why, in particular, Darren Dreger highlights that it's depth that the Flames are going to be looking for. A depth defenseman or another depth forward. So no more JT Miller, no more, I guess, Mark Giordano, no more Ben Chirots because those are going to be pretty expensive right here. There are indeed some other good depth players around the NHL and the markets, I believe, though. So, who knows? There could be a pretty good market for what the Calgary Flames are looking for. It's just, for Montreal, taking a look at how Ben Sherratt has been faring, he could have been a Flame, too. It just didn't happen that way, because the trade became apparently too unrealistically big. And, you know, to be fair, like, I could totally understand why that's an excuse, because, like... You don't want to make a trade where you're giving up two firsts and a really good prospect and another fifth round pick. Like, that's huge. Really, really huge. And for Calgary, a lot of people didn't really think that they would even be in this contention spot in the first place. They're like second first in the Pacific right now. And I mean, Johnny Gaudreau is expiring. You have Manji Apani to resign. There's the entire thing with Dechuk and all that. Like, this team was not really supposed to be as good as they are in a lot of people's eyes, but they are. And so now they have no choice but to add because they don't really know how the future is going to shape up with Gaudreau and Monaghan and whatnot. So Tyler Toffoli, they got this guy. He signed for a while. Ben Chirot could have been added on too, but the price would have been way too big. So let me know in the comments if you're a Flames fan. How are you? Like, I know Tyler Toffoli did his thing yesterday and you're happy with that, but are you happy with the team bowing out and stepping out of the Ben Sherratt talks as well? It appears that you're not going to go out there and do this, but he also was an integral part of these discussions up until the last minute. So talk to me in the comments. What do you think about that entire process? If you're a Montreal Canadiens fan, tell me in the comments, what do you think about Ben Sherratt? He's probably going to get traded soon. What are your opinions on what he could fetch? And where do you think he's going to go? There are teams all over the NHL that have reportedly been interested in the services. And so that's going to make things extraordinarily interesting, seeing how far the bidding war is going to go. Montreal, if you were in charge, if you were Kent Hughes, what is the least you would accept for Ben Sherratt? Pierre Lebrun kind of noted it here, a first round pick and another asset that they're just going to go ahead and accept the first one that comes their way. What is that? Specifically, what do you think is the package that would be the least worthy of allowing you to trade a Ben Chirot? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts about this entire idea. Seven to ten days appears to be the timeline, so we'll be keeping our eyes out like hawks waiting for those tweets for the trade calls to go through. But I hope you enjoyed this with a Charles Cyanine. And... 
Bye.